Hello, and how are you on this fine March 1st day with spring right around the corner and um, beautiful weather today until this evening, and then I think it's going to get a little, maybe a little wild for the next few days, but I'll take it. This is beautiful. And you're watching the Cannon County Chamber Connection, and of course, as always, it's brought to you by DTC Communications. Uh, a great partner for the chamber and always has been. Uh, my name is Carolyn Motley, if you don't know that by now, and my co-host is Keith Reddy. And we will welcome you to the show today. We have some informative people to talk to. Um, I do want to give you a little reminder to begin with. Daylight Savings Time begins on March 12th. So you will spring forward, move your clocks forward an hour. And I always look forward to that, and I wish it would stay at that. <laughs> and they would never change it again. But uh, your first day of spring is going to be March 20th. And then, lo and behold, we're going to have summer. And I'm looking forward to 80-degree days every day or more, because I'm I'm done with the cold. <laughs> I'm out of here on that. Okay, we do have some guests with us today. And uh, we have the Child Advocacy Center, who does a lot of good work here in our community. And with us, we have Katie Enzor. No, no. Katie's Amanda. not with us. Katie's not with us, all righty. Christine O'Day, I know you're here. Yes. She's doing roll call now, get ready. <laughs> and Amanda Hammond. And we have a new one that took Katie's place, I guess. Well, she took Presley's place, but Julie. Yes, ma'am. All right, she didn't give me your name yet, I don't think. I didn't have it down here if she did. Anyway, it doesn't matter, we're all here. And Keith, I'm going to let you uh, interview them as far as for the reasoning that they're here. And you are a member of that board right. for the Cannon Runs for Children, right? Well, me and Christine are uh, co-chairman of this particular board in this particular event. And Christine, you got your Fitbit ready <laughs> to go? I'm getting ready. All right. April the 15th uh, is going to be the annual Cannon Runs for Children 5K walk. Christine, tell us a little bit about how this came to be. And, you know, we were, we were off two years. I hadn't yeah. had it for... And last year we had it very yeah. successful and look forward to another successful run this year. Yes, last year was our the first year back, our since, first year back. Uh, since COVID. And so this is a fundraiser for the Child Advocacy Center and it um, raises money for all the services that they provide. They're an amazing resource for our community. Um, I work with the juvenile court, so we use the Child Advocacy Center a lot with our, our cases, with our families, with our children. Um, and I'll let Amanda explain a little bit more about what those um, funds go towards to help in the community. All right, yeah, so the CAC does a couple of things. We do, um, we work with uh, the Child Protective Investigative Team for, so to uh, help kind of investigate severe sexual and like child abuse. Um, so we work with DCS. We provide a space at our office for children to come um, and have interviews done if there's, you know, allegations that something has happened to them. We provide a safe place for kids, uh, try to reduce trauma, um, help them to only have to tell their story. You know, one time instead of being interviewed by DCS here and, and uh, law enforcement here and there and, and having to tell everybody something. So we try to just reduce that trauma and provide one safe spot for them to be able to tell their story and talk about what's happened with them. And while they're at our office um, telling or talking to our interviewers who are trained interviewers to talk with children, um, we provide services to the parents or caregivers that bring the kids to our office, helping them with resources if they need counseling, um, if they need numbers to call for different things or whatever the situation may be. Uh, we provide that information to the family so they don't feel like they're alone. Um, just somebody to support them as they go through this because we all know um, situations like that are stressful. Um, there could be a lot of confusion on what to do and you know how to process through emotions. Um, 
We don't want to believe that sex abuse happens, but it definitely does. Um, and we definitely want to help families that are having to go through situations like that. Do you still do the in-home visits? I do. And so that's another part that we do at the Child Advocacy Center. We have something called our Drug Endangered Children's Program. And um, it's an in-home service that we provide to families for free. So there's no cost for our services. We're able to do these services. It's grant funded for the community. So like Christine was saying with our, our fundraiser, that helps um, with stuff like travel to people's houses, um, to be able to help uh, maybe with some items that families may need. Um, extra things that our grants aren't covering, but um, we are 100% relying on grants and community donations to be able to, to do our services. Um, but yeah, the Drug Endangered Children's Program, like I said, it's a free service to families. I get referrals through the school, through the court system. Um, anybody can call our office and say, hey, I, I just need a little help. Um, and that can look different for every family. It could be, like I've said before, grandparents who are taking on grandkids because parents are unavailable to take care of the kids for substance abuse reasons, or maybe they're incarcerated or something. Um, so grandparents, you know, and they, they've already raised their kids and they're taking on these younger kids. And but so, this is more and more all the time. Yeah, and so just they just need somebody to reach out to and help them kind of problem solve things now. Um, so that's what I try to do. For, like I said, for every family it looks different. So situations are always unique. I, you know, I'm not, I try to take each family as like a case by case. It's like never the same thing, never the same solution for each family, you know. So it's very individualized. Um, In some cases, one of the parents, for whatever reason, is removed from the home. Yeah. So that makes it very difficult. Yeah, it for does. the remaining parent. <laughs> so, and you and you never know how kids are going to process through traumatic situations, and not having a parent at home with them is definitely traumatic. Mm -hmm. And so, having somebody that can kind of help, uh, like I said, walk these families along this process and through this journey, and just know that they're not alone. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I really try to do mm -hmm. um, in the community is just be a support. And I tell people all the time, I'm here to help you. Like I, essentially, I'm working for you. So whatever you feel like you need, I'm gonna to try to be that person for you. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I mentioned SIPIT, our Child Protective Investigative Team. That is when we work with DCS and law enforcement and the district attorney's office. And that is to discuss every case that comes through Cannon County with the allegation of severe uh, physical abuse or sex abuse. And we discuss those cases with law enforcement and the district attorney because we uh, decide as a team whether to move forward with prosecution and press and charges and stuff like that. So those cases are talked about every month. And you do have some training that goes along with this to the public. Yes, ma'am. Like the lightness to dark. Yes. Is that it? That is, and that's why Miss Julie is here today. Yeah. She Hi, Julie. Her Presley. debut, yeah. So we She's have, real shy. We had Presley with us, and Presley <laughs> is still with the Child Advocacy Center. She has just moved to the Rutherford location. I um, mean, you know, Rutherford, we do interchange sometimes rock. We have people from Rutherford come to Cannon and work, and we work closely together. So Julie is here to do the Darkness to Light for Cannon County, and she is a Cannon County native right here. <laughs> yep, I have um, always visited or been a part of the Cannon community, but have officially lived here almost seven years um, this year. And so I am excited to be with the um, Child Advocacy Center. I'm on the prevention side. So um, we offer darkness to light training, which is um, a child sexual abuse prevention training, um, which is great, especially for organizations that deal with children. And so any um, sports team or religious organization or school, um, but truly even for parents, um, because if your child disclosed abuse to you, how would you tell someone? Would you just call the police? What do you do? What constitutes abuse? Mm -hmm. um, and this training really teaches you how to handle those next steps because nobody wants to think that it's going to happen to their child. Mm -hmm. But the truth mm -hmm. is that um, one in 10 kids will be sexually abused before they're 18. Um, and so in Cannon County, that's about two kids per classroom, yeah. which is 
staggering. And another thing that after I took the training that I was the most shocked about, I tell people this all the time, 90% of all kids know and trust their abuser. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, when I grew up, it was don't talk to strangers, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's not so much like that. And not to say that that doesn't happen, but most kids, their abuser has formed a relationship with them. And that again, adds another layer of trauma because now we're having to separate the child from their abuser. And it, it's, you know, it's hard for kids to understand why things are happening the way they do. Mm -hmm. And so if we can prevent that or um, within an organization set up um, boundaries to prevent that from happening or to stop that abuse, that's um, what my training helps teach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, if you, anybody is open to take the training, we have a goal to train every adult in Cannon County. We would love to see everyone in Cannon County trained on this because it's not like a... It's just good information to have. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you're guilty of anything or that you're expected to go around and police the neighborhood and report child <laughs> abuse. I mean, it's just good to know. Yeah. Um, as a parent, I'm glad I know these things. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's yeah. yeah, if a kid said something to your child on the bus, um, this is how to report that. This is how to tell someone in a, the most efficient manner. And so um, we offer public trainings, we offer trainings for organizations, um, and a lot of those can even be virtual now, which is great. Um, oh yeah, we do offer a virtual training, mm -hmm. so that's easy. You can just pop the computer on while you're cooking dinner or something at night and do a nighttime training. Exactly. Yeah, convenience mm -hmm. of your Multitask. house. Multitask. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you, want to, if you would like to schedule a training as an individual or an organization, just you can contact our office. Our phone number at the office is 563-9915. Uh, um, so that would probably be say that a little slower. Six, yeah, six one five five six three nine nine one five, and that will, that will take you right to our desk. Of course, we have emails too, but you know, if mm -hmm. you just call our office, That's we'll, we'll get you connected. Yeah, mm -hmm. and even for um, for daycares or schools, a lot of times you're required to have credits um, with the state, and this meets those mandates. And so, just um, it is a wonderful free resource here in Canon. Do we want to say anything else about the run? Yes, actually, I was going yes, to. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be at the Art Center of Cannon County on Saturday, March, or April 15th, April 15th. So you've got a, a little over a month to prepare for this. Prepare your body and come on out. Christine, how do they get a hold of, uh, how do they register? Well, I would need to. I'd yes. need to prepare for a run like this. I would have had to have started My last year. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. See? Well, you don't have to run. You can come out and walk. You can come well, out Well, I'd still have to prepare for that, too. everybody on. Okay, I can, yes. I can do that. I've got, I'll even have a microphone that yes. we can take around. Yeah. So we encourage all families and um, children and community to come out and just support the event, whether you choose to run, walk, or cheer and everybody on. And of course, on. there are t-shirts involved. And there are t-shirts, <laughs> yes, yes. And um, so Keith had asked how we can go about registering for that. Mm -hmm. The schools have all received registration forms, so they should have been going home with the kids. Um, you can contact the Child Advocacy Center, um, the courthouse. You can come down to my office. I'm in the basement with the, uh, the clerk's office, and I can help you get set up. And I also believe online. You they can, can do register it. online through our website. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we will be posting flyers around town. Yes. So, I mean, mm -hmm. hopefully with a QR code that you can just snap a picture of and it takes you right to the registration. So we're trying to make it pretty easy. And you can also register the day of. Mm -hmm. Just show up at the Art Center that morning and we'll get you registered. I and think that starts what around 640, 645. 645, okay. And when are we going to shoot off the gun to start the race? I think the race starts at 730. Okay. Okay. Um, and then there is there is a registration fee, but we also offer a scholarship. So don't let the monetary piece keep you from participating. Mm -hmm. We do offer scholarships for kids. We want everybody to be able to come out and, and run and just enjoy the event. You may ha take some of these to the senior center. Yeah. Because they have a walking club up there. And that oh, was, you awesome. read my mind, because yep. that was, was I actually awesome. thought about that yesterday. I said, mm -hmm. I need to print some flyers for them because we want everybody involved. Yeah. We want mm -hmm. everybody involved in this run. And that okay. would be great. And they may have some great kids that they could come and partner with. Yeah, so it's yeah. not just, what, do you have a route? Yes. Already said Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Elrod helps kind of map that route out mm -hmm. for us. And I, what is 5K? Is what, three miles? A little over three miles, miles, I think. Yeah, we're going to go yeah. down John Bragg Highway and almost hit the J turn down there. 
and you go, I know you go off the road and down, and you yeah. get to see some llamas, and <laughs> and come back around and back to the art center. So. It's a beautiful route, and we do time it. So if you're if you're competitive, you yeah. get your timing. So I mean. <laughs> And and some of these people are serious, aren't they? they? Are. Yeah. They, yes. they do that. They want it right on the right on the nose. I Most of these year. people are serious, except for maybe some of the little kids. <laughs> may not be too serious. They just want to run, or walk, or do whatever. And we are hoping to get the kids involved, even if they can't be at the run, involved through their artwork. Yeah. And so we are opening up to the schools to submit some art from students. Um, we're hoping that our T-shirt is designed by yes. kids this year. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to display um, all of the artwork that we get. Okay, we're going to display it throughout. Yeah, because uh, April is National Square. Child Abuse Prevention mm -hmm. Month. So um, we'll put our pinwheels out that represents child abuse prevention and hopefully students' artwork and get everybody in the community excited about preventing child abuse. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that even excites me. And I... I don't run or walk. Well, we can, we can get you a, like a buggy or something and push yeah, you down yeah, the buggy yeah. and push you down. Hey, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. It depends on who's pushing the buggy there. I will not push your buggy. Oh, good. I promise. I I'll, I'll call the play-by-play, -play, though. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies, is there anything else you would like to tell us that you have in the making for maybe a little later on? Well, do you take donations on, donations on a regular basis? And yes. I don't mean, well, probably monetary, but also other types of donations. Do you take them? Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. we do. Um, you know, I work with all kinds of families, so we never. I never know exactly what families need until they tell me. But usually, when people call and say, "I've got books or stuffed animals or clothing or you know something, shoes," it just depends. I can usually always find somebody that has a need for those things. Right. And so I'm able to plug that in. And if I can't plug it in, I usually find another agency in the community that can use it, uh, like, you know, save. I work, mm -hmm. I partner with a lot of places because I want to make sure that it gets used. Out in the right. Um, yeah. So yeah, people sometimes will drop stuff off on our porch. Um, that's fine. If you want to call our office and schedule a time to meet, if you've got things, if you have questions on whether we'll take it, you can always call us. But yeah, we, we accept that as a way to help our families. Now don't take your old refrigerator no. or your water <laughs> dryer down there, please. Uh, this is more or less for clothes and items such as that. I have a or, lot of families that need hygiene items. Right, or, or cleaning even supplies. cleaning supplies or Those anything are always, like yeah, that. Those are great things. And when kids come to see us, you know, they, um, they, they get snacks and stuff. So any of that stuff is good. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very good. Welcome aboard, and <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to add? I think I've added all I can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're excited to have Julie here, and uh, excited for our, our event that's coming mm -hmm. up. Yeah, before we went on, we Julie was talking about how she prepared for this. She watched some old videos. <laughs> I did. That's a good thing. <laughs> hey, we know people watch us now for sure, right? <laughs> Your numbers went up way up. <laughs> that, that may be kind of scary, too. I'm not sure, but... All right, ladies. We well, thank right, you, well, and we'll have you back you. after the race and yeah. see how it went and yes. how many people lived. And <laughs> hopefully, everyone. <laughs> hopefully so. But there will be EMS on standby. Not well, on. <laughs> and you're not far from the hospital. <laughs> All right. Well, we thank you, and we'll see you back here again. All right. Yes, thank, thank, thank you, you so here. much. All right. Right now, we're going to change out. Um, people on the chairs and this next guy <clears throat> that's coming up is very entertaining Randy is one of these that is with the Woodbury Lions Club I'm gonna sit on this side so that you can be the rose between the two thorns well that sounds fine to me that's the first time I've ever been called a thorn <laughs> a rose I think he was referring well to he's, yeah but I'm calling myself a thorn that's what he said between two thorns so yeah well if the shoe fits yeah wear I wear it and lace it up right yeah exactly that's right all right Rand this is Randy Greenwood Good morning. and Randy is on the board for the Woodbury Lions Club and our Woodbury Lions Club throughout the year has many events that not only help Woodbury and Cannon County, but also uh, 
the national charities that the Lions Club is responsible for helping, one of those being the white cane. And we used to do that as a roadblock, and that has been outlawed in our county now, which is fine with me. I don't have a problem with that. But we raised a lot of money that way to give to the white cane program, which is a site program. And one of these things is what Randy's going to tell you about right next. I'm going to do this in an interesting fashion. Uh, this, is, this is our flyer. <laughs> Uh, we have a fish fry coming up on Saturday, March the 18th, and this will be at the Lions Club building here in Woodbury, and it uh, will be serving from 11 to 6, and uh, cost is uh, $12 for adults and $6 for kids 12 and under, and it's all you can eat, and if you've ever been to a Lions Club fish fry, you know they're good. Oh. So, uh, we use uh, very high quality ingredients and uh, a lot of TLC with our volunteer help to uh, really pull it together and make it happen very nicely. Homemade so, desserts. Yeah, homemade desserts and uh, to go plates. Yeah, we can we can do it all. <clears throat> They're so, set up for it. Uh, before I talk about uh, white cane specifically, I'd like to just spend a minute uh, talking about the Lions Club. Uh, the Lions Club was started by a young man in Chicago who was an insurance salesman named Melvin Jones, and it was started about 1917, so we're about 105 years, almost 106 years old now. And uh, uh, from that humble beginning, uh, we've grown to more than 42,000 clubs worldwide and about a million and a half members. And the Lions Club... Uh, International is the largest all-volunteer organization. Everybody from the lowest person in a local club to the international president all work as volunteers. They don't, we don't take a penny of salary or compensation. So virtually everything that the Lions Club brings in through the various projects goes to benefit our various uh, charities, such as the White Cane Program that I'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, started in 1917. In 1925, uh, Helen Keller came and spoke to the uh, then infant uh, Lions Club there in Chicago and beseeched them to do something for people who are visually challenged, uh, those who can't see. Uh, of course, Helen Keller was exceptionally challenged because not only could she not see, but she had problems with hearing and uh, speech as well. So she, she overcame a lot of adversity in her life and became a real champion for those causes. So that was the beginning of the programs uh, that we have uh, that are primarily, uh, uh, almost exclusively in the early days, we're benefiting vision programs, sight programs, but we've, we've added uh, a number of things uh, since then. And uh, the white cane is known as the international symbol for somebody who is visually challenged. There's a white cane with a red tip on it. And there are actually laws in all 50 states that if a person with a white cane starts to cross the street, uh, they have the right of way and cars and vehicles are required to stop. So uh, it's a, it's, it's a well-known symbol. And so we, we just use the name white cane for the various projects that benefit uh, the various uh, programs that we uh, support. Uh, these include the Tennessee School for the Blind, the Tennessee School for the Deaf, uh, Leader Service Dogs for the Blind, World Services for the Blind, uh, Children's Cancer Program at Vanderbilt, uh, Kids Sight Screening, uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research and Awareness. Uh, there are some veterans charities that we uh, support. And then we uh, render assistance when people have uh, uh, natural disasters such as hurricanes or tornadoes, the, the lions will show up and uh, have money that they, they can uh, hand out to uh, victims uh, pretty quickly. So, and I can speak firsthand, my daughter lives in Iowa and they had a, had a uh, tornado last March 
uh, destroy their uh, horse barn and damage their house. And the second day, the local Lions Club showed up with a check for $1,000. So it's, uh, it's pretty amazing to see how that works, and it's very humbling to, to be a part of that. So uh, we, uh, <clears throat> we raised money through various things. Uh, Carolyn mentioned for years we had done roadblocks, and uh, having been one who personally stood out there and uh, did the death-defying act of dodging <laughs> traffic, I'm happy not to be out there doing yeah, well, that anymore. I am too, Randy. Uh, it, it was pretty scary sometimes, particularly when you look down, and even though there are laws against it, people are on their cell phones, they're talking, <laughs> they're doing their hair, they're reading books. It's kind of scary to see what goes by in a car. So uh, at any rate, uh, we have shifted uh, our fundraising uh, to some uh, other activities, and uh, probably the, the biggest one that we're doing for the uh, White Cane projects now are fish fries. Uh, we're targeting about three a year, and the proceeds from these fish fries will use to, to benefit all of these various uh, uh, vision and other programs that we uh, support. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, the, the club is involved in a number of other things, too, and I'll just make quick mention that uh, we just this past weekend had the Princess Ball at the Arts Center, uh, which is, I guess, described as a father-daughter uh, event. And uh, a good time ahead ball. We had an excellent turnout. I think Carolyn said we had 137. 37. That didn't count all of the volunteers. Yeah. Just and the people, the people that work yeah. in it too. So, so yeah, it everybody was came and had a good time. So, anyway, in addition to that, uh, another one of our big fundraisers is probably the biggest one for the year, is the annual uh, one day horse show, walking horse show that we do here at the uh, Cannon County Fairgrounds. And that is always the first weekend in July. So, you can put that on your calendar. Uh, we, we have lots of volunteers who will be providing food services. Uh, we grill, we cook. Uh, this year we're going to add, uh, do some smoking with pork butts and that sort of thing. So We have homemade fried pies. And they are <laughs> in high demand. <laughs> they are in high demand. I think last year she made 300. And they, they were wanting more. And they sold out early. Yeah, yeah they yeah, did. Yeah. So. And we have ice cream. This year we may have an ice cream truck that will have more than just the pints of ice cream, but we'll see how that works out. <coughs> Excuse me. So, at any rate, uh, we're involved all year round. Uh, the, the Lions Club motto is very simple. We serve. And we want to always extend an invitation to anybody that might have an interest in uh, helping your friends and neighbors here locally, because a lot of what we do benefits our local community here, uh, Cannon County and Woodbury. And uh, we have the food drive for the food bank. Yep, we do, um, we do that in uh, uh, November, we, December, right. and uh, very successful. And. Uh, so at any rate, uh, we're always looking for people who would like to help our friends and neighbors to volunteer. Uh, all you have to do is show up. We meet the second and fourth Monday night at the Lions Club, and we usually uh, have a meal and uh, do a little business and uh, have a little social time. So at any rate, uh, we, we want to always extend an open invitation for people. If you, if you have a desire in your heart to want to serve, this is a great place to plug in locally. And you know, we do, a, we help the food drive. I mean, uh, the food drive, yes, but we also do the blood mobile at the Lions Club and the Lions, uh, what, who is it, who is the blood? people that come. American Red Cross. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's actually the uh, third Thursday of every odd month. And since we're on March the 1st today, this is an odd month. So the third Thursday of this month will be, and that'll be third, 10, seven, be the 17th, uh, will be, no, 16th, sorry, uh, will be the uh, uh, blood, mobile. blood blood drive uh, in conjunction with American Red Cross at the Lions Club building. 
and we typically have excellent turnouts. We outperform much larger organizations that the Red Cross works with uh, in Williamson County, Rutherford County, even in Nashville, we've outperformed some of their uh, giving units. So this is a very giving community when it comes to uh, donating blood. Do you know if this is the month that they do the customer appreciation? Is this the month? I think it is. In March? Uh, it may be. I don't, I can't yeah. answer for I sure. I didn't know I if you know. still did I'm the, not sure yeah. either. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, as far as for the site things, uh, our Lions Club also goes out to the schools and do site training or site screening, screening. with the kids. And they have, over the years, uh, identified many problems with local children that warranted eye surgery, um, which they're in affiliation with Vanderbilt and can get a lot of that or help to get a lot of that done. Yeah. We also send glasses, used glasses that people bring in, but there's a lot of places in the world who don't have the opportunity to get glasses anywhere. So a lot of these glasses go out to those places. For the, uh, the kids and families here locally who go through the vision screening, if they can't afford glasses, the Lions Club will provide glasses for them. And as Carolyn mentioned, if somebody has a need for surgery, corrective surgery of some kind uh, relating to their eyes, uh, the Lions Club actually, the local Lions Club actually worked with Vanderbilt to start the, uh, uh, the Vanderbilt uh, Vision Clinic that they have there at Vanderbilt Hospital in Nashville. So, and we will uh, provide assistance in terms of funding, uh, supporting them to uh, provide uh, care to get surgery as needed. Plus, we have a lot of fun things. We have the Christmas Parade. That's the Lions Club Christmas Parade in December. Also, pancakes with Santa that morning. And then in the evening, hopefully this year, the tour of homes will be back. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of fun things that happen, as well as things, if you're interested in working for your community and giving a little time and effort, there's a, there's a place for you and that's in the Lions Club. So you just come to a meeting or else contact a Lions Club member. I'm, I'm a relative newcomer to Woodbury. I moved here in 2016, and I can just say firsthand, it's, it has been an excellent way for me to get plugged in and get to know people in the local community by becoming a part of the Lions Club. I had, when I retired, I had a desire in my heart to want to serve anyway. And uh, this has been a very rewarding experience to uh, work with the Lions Club. So there you go. How can you say no to that? <laughs> How can you? <laughs> but we do want you to come to the fish fry. And again, that's on March 18th at the Lions Club from 11 to 6. And if you need any more information about it, you can call the chamber and I'll be glad to give you that information. I don't know what else I could tell you about that. It's excellent food. The fish is some of the best I've ever eaten, really. But if you don't have a taste for fish, they also have chicken. We also do fried chicken. And they have fries that go with that, and coleslaw, and white beans, and hush puppies, and homemade desserts. And homemade desserts, yeah. Come on, y'all come out, enjoy it. We come have a lot of people. Enjoy. That's right. <laughs> And it goes to a great cause. Yep, yep. All right. Well, Randy, is there anything else you want to talk about or anybody? I've worn my tongue out. <laughs> all right. It's all thorned out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome to stay for the rest. I've got some little things here that we're having throughout the county so far. It's early in the year. Events will start happening probably more and more as the weather gets better. So... Um, at the Art Center, of course, there's always something going on. And one of the things that's happening there is the school matinee series, which started today. And that will be March 1st through the 11th. We have school children from counties all around Cannon County that come to that by the bus loads. And the name of the musical is Junie B. Jones. And these little kids that came in today 
were also picnicking after the show down under the farmer's market. And they thought that was a big deal as well as seeing a live performance. And a lot of them were children their age that were performing in it. So they're always excited about that. The next one will be James the Giant Peach Jr. And that will be May 2nd through the 13th. And you need to call the Art Center if you're a school or something and planning a field trip and let them know you're interested in that and they can tell you what to do from that point. March 31st through the 15th, their next show will be Moon Over Buffalo. And um, <clears throat> the last one they had, Into the Woods, I think they had just about sellout crowds for every, every night they had that. So that was a good thing. Season tickets are still available. And since one show has already is completed, the price has gone down to $60. And that's kind of the gift that keeps on giving because you get six more shows for that $60. So there you go. And then the next concert that they will have will be on May 26th and 27th, and that will be the Jake Leg Stompers. And that is more or less a vaudeville group, but every time they come to the Art Center, it's a sellout crowd. So you might book your tickets early for that one too, because that's just a two night show. And then let's see, April 7th and 8th, no, March 18th. Well, we just talked about that. That's the Lions Club fish fry, fish and chicken, chicken fry. And it's, it's more food. You just can't imagine how much and how much fish they fry for this. But you will enjoy it. Take my word for it, you will. So, and it goes to a good cause. So, and then April 7th and 8th is spring around the square. And this is a shop till you drop experience. <laughs> we have antique stores, boutiques, jewelry, furniture, and don't forget all of the unique restaurants that we have, not only around the square, but in Woodbury area. We have every type of restaurant that you could wish to eat at. Um, so yeah, that's a day where you just get a group together and come to Woodbury and go around the square. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. You'll love the antique stores. You'll love the boutiques. We have coffee shops, tea shops. We even have a new shop, a new cafe that's on Main Street. It's not on the square, but they have hand dipped ice cream. So something every day. April 1st is Out of the Darkness Campus Walk at Cannon County High School. And this is to provide awareness and funds for the suicide prevention in conjunction with the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And registration and activities will begin at 9 a.m. The opening ceremony and walk will begin at 11. And that is, is at Cannon County High School. And then April 15th is the Cannon Runs for Children. And that was just um, the Child Advocacy Center is the one who puts this on. And it's a 5K run or walk. And we just talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, we'll <laughs> crank it up at 645 for registration, 730. We'll fire off the race gun and everybody can go and that and will walk. be at the art center right where that begins and you will end up at the art center so or if you don't end up at the art center that's <laughs> we'll, we'll have to send, have to send team. somebody out the EMS will be there, so we'll send them out looking for you <laughs> yeah all the medical people will be there <laughs> okay april 23rd that will be the first cruise in on the square of the 2023 season it will be from four to seven. All cars and trucks are welcome. DTC will be there handing out caps. 
and letting you sign up for the TV that they give away at the car show in September. Shelter Insurance will provide free drinks and snacks. Moonlight Drive-In is going to give each participating cruiser a free ticket to the drive-in, which will probably open, I want to say, in April. I haven't gotten a date so far. But um, <clears throat> they always provide us with tickets for that. And also, O'Reilly's Auto Parts will provide the door prizes. And of course, you have DJ Music by Keith, and he'll keep you entertained during this whole time and let you know what's going on and call out the winners of the door prize. So if you need more information on that, I do have flip cards coming that have all the dates and the hours and also on the back of them will be information about the car show in September. And as soon as I get those, I will be handing them out and sending them out. But you can always call me at 615-563-2222 and if you have any questions or comments about it. I really want good comments if you really want to know. <laughs> and we do want to take this time to congratulate the Cannon County Lions and Lionettes for a very entertaining season. I think this, the basketball season for both teams ended on Monday night, but they certainly gave people a lot to applaud about. Uh, during the season, and everybody's looking forward to next season. So I just wanted to congratulate them. And now's the time of year that it goes flying by fast because baseball, softball, spring sports arriving March the 13th will be the openers for the high school. The middle school, they're participating in their first uh, season, baseball and softball season. Uh, the girls beat DeKalb County last night in their opener. Uh, pretty good. I think it was 12 7 was the final. And the boys, however, they uh, were on the losing end of a baseball game to Moore County last night in their season opener. So, but. Uh, what about the um, banquet that the papers involved in? Oh, that won't be until May. I uh, can't remember the date. I'd have to look at the calendar, but it's. The Thursday before graduation, whenever graduation is on that Friday, it's the Thursday. Now, we are accepting nominations now, so if you uh, have somebody that you would like to see get nominated into our class of Hall of Famers this, this year, uh, please uh, either go by the office, call the office, uh, get you a copy of the courier because there's a registration form on there. There's also a copy of the registration form on the courier website. Uh, fill that out and uh, uh, try to uh, give us as much information as the person that you're nominating as you can uh, so we can have a good uh, background of it going into this and bring it by the offices and our committee will be getting together soon and, and, uh, and uh, doing the final nominations and voting for the class. Do you have that date? I don't. I have it on my calendar where's your, at work. Where's your May? Right That's here. May. Okay, May 18th. 18th will be the okay. the uh, Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. I guess the 19th will be graduation. That's how it usually works. So. <coughs> okay, and then of course in May we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here, but May 12th and 13th will of course be good old days and that is a fundraiser for our cannon county senior center and i also want to backtrack on what we talked about with barry lions club with the blood drive this month usually in the month of march it is a customer appreciation i'm not sure if they still do that i think they do um, this is an opportunity for you to go out and give the gift of life at the Woodbury Lions Club building. Start, they start, if, if it's been in the past with the customer appreciation, they start this one at 10 o'clock in the morning. But normally they start at 12 noon to 6. You don't have to have an appointment. It would be good to, if you did register and uh, put together an appointment for that particular Thursday. But uh, you'll have the opportunity to win some door prizes. Uh, meet all kinds of people in the community because everybody hangs out on that particular one. And uh, this one's usually held in the memory of Nolan Dude Northcutt because Nolan, Nolan, uh, Mr. Northcutt's birthday was in March. 
That's and right. the reason why I remember that is because my birthday was in March. So. Oh, well, there you go. What day is your birthday? Mine's on the 24th. It's on a Friday. So, yep. I'll have to Just write that down. Just a few days away. Send you something. <laughs> so, yeah, mark it on mark it on your calendar, the 24th. It is on a Friday, right? Yeah, I hope right. so. Okay. <laughs> so. All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about I, while we're here? All I can think of. We've touched on a little bit of everything that's happening. Well, the, everything that's right now. As we, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow, there's probably going to be 10 more activities released. Or somebody <laughs> will call me and say, well, you didn't mention this, but yeah. I try to get everybody in there. But there's always something at the Art Center. There's something going on in Cannon County all the time. And even if it's not going on, you're welcome to come and visit all our unique stores. We have a little strip mall that has opened up that has a Greek food place. The cafe that I was talking about that had hand-dipped ice cream and specialty coffees and teas. There is a barber shop there. And it is a hot barber shop, by the way, because there's some, some Cannon County people that work there that uh, it came out of Murphy's Brothers Barbershop did, but when they opened, they hired some barbers out of, uh, out of Woodbury. Uh, one is Ty Kine, and if you've heard that name before, he's, he's very popular down there from what I understand. In fact, uh, there's no reason to go, and I know I need a haircut, but there's no reason to go without a haircut here in Canton County because there's been about two or three barbershops that have opened in the last. Recently, yeah. you know, there for a while we went where there was maybe one. Of course, a lot of our beauty shops, yeah. as we call them, are also um, men Water can shops. get their hair cut right. there too. But um, yeah, we have a little bit of everything here, so you can come and pick out what you want to go through, but if antiques are your thing, good heavens, we've got them here, and then Gasaway, Braidable, um, can't go wrong. You can take a whole day and go through all of them. And we are about done for this month, and we want to thank you for watching, and we'll hopefully see you next month.